Hi, thanks for joining me today, guys. Today we're gonna to talk about some injuries that you might be might sustain when you're training for a strenuous hike. Now, the program that we're providing for you should eliminate a lot of these issues, especially when we're propelling and bringing up the posterior chain. Good, healthy, strong hips are gonna to lead to good, um, to you propelling yourself correctly when you're on the trail. So let's talk about a few things. And we're gonna start off with the lower leg. Generally speaking, you're spending a lot of time on the trail in your training, so the lower leg can take a beating. A couple of the injuries that you might sustain are plantar fasciitis, some Achilles tendonitis, and or some shin splints. So we're gonna talk about some easy solutions for that. So plantar fasciitis is a sheath that runs to the bottom of the foot. So as I remove my shoe, I'll, I'll point to the area that you will have some discomfort. A lot of that, a lot of these injuries come come from developing or going into your programming and going too fast, too quick without enough recovery. But if we pay attention to some of these, some of the stretches and modalities that I'm about to describe to you, you'll be able to nip those in the bud. So one of the easiest things is if you're having discomfort in the bottom of the foot and plantar fasciitis is usually what's starting to rear its head. Again, you can take um, a tennis ball and massage the lower leg, or I'm sorry, massage the bottom of the foot. Like with Achilles tendonitis, also a slant board or an elevated surface is gonna provide an opportunity to stretch out the foot and the lower leg. So if you start to encounter discomfort in the back, in the Achilles near the heel, that's Achilles tendonitis starting to rear its ugly head as well. And that comes from too much stress into the Achilles and the lower leg. So you can use a slant board or just a step to loosen up the lower leg. Again, this is also helpful for plantar fasciitis. We lo loosen up the calf by elevating the toe on an elevated surface, okay? You can add two feet or one foot. Okay, the next issue we're gonna talk about is shin splints. Now, a lot of times that comes from some weakness in the tibialis anterior, the muscles and the front part of the shin. And a lot of times that happens when we're walking on the trail. The foot, the front part of the shin can't tolerate the amount of dorsiflexion or the amount we lift our foot. And so that muscle starts to become irritated with training. So a simple way to start working on that is to take your tennis ball and lay down on the floor and rub through the, this area of the shin right here. Now you can do, I can actually use my hands, my thumbs, or I can lay down on a, on a foam roller or in, in this case, using the tennis ball to rub out the muscles of the shin. For a little physical therapy for that area, one of my favorite things to do with clients is an alternating toe tap. And this is very simple. We dorsiflex and alternate lifting feet in this fashion. Build yourself up and build um, not only frequency and speed, but also duration of time when you're doing this. Okay. For the last area that we're gonna talk about is for the low back. Again, the program we're providing for you guys should eliminate all these issues, but sometimes maybe a stumble on a trail um, or a combination of miscue on your, on your kettlebell swing could lead us to some low back soreness. Now, the particular type of soreness that we're talking about is a string to a particular muscle group, called your QL for short, that runs out laterally. Anytime this area of your back is not working or sore, the glutes are not working as well. So this is a compensatory injury. Glutes don't work, this area wants to become over involved. One of the simplest ways to rehabilitate it is a hip hike. It's a very simple way to, to execute the hip hike is that we have our hip bones is the first landmark. We have a low, our lower rib. We support our weight on a frame. From here, we open the distance between the two areas and then draw them together and then relax. Now, when we're doing this movement, we're gonna get some oblique involvement, that's normal. But what we wanna be able to do is feel this part of our back also contract. So again, I'm relaxing and opening and drawing together. Relaxing and opening and drawing together. From the front, relaxing and opening, drawing together. So on the injured side, you want to be able to work your repetitions up to 15 to 20 to rehab that area. Again, you're gonna get some oblique involvement, but you also get some fatigue in the lower back. 